While for the Romans it may have seemed that this eruption occurred with no warning signs, we now know that events in the days leading up to it were caused by the pressure inside the volcano. Pliny wrote, For several days past there had been earth tremors, which were not particularly alarming because they are frequent in Campania. But that night the shocks were so violent that everything felt as if it was not only shaken, but overturned. My mother hurried into my room and found me already getting up to wake her as if she was still asleep. By now, it was dawn, but the light was still dim and faint. The buildings round us were already tottering, and the open space we were in was too small for us not to be in real and imminent danger if the house collapsed. This finally decided us to leave the town. <coughs> We are taking a closer look at the science of volcanoes and coming up in the next 30 minutes, what makes volcanoes so dangerous and how we can make a model of one in a fish tank. And we're also following the story of Pliny the Younger as he saw the eruption of Mount Vesuvius happen. In a second letter, he describes what he and his mother experienced as they tried to escape the city while Vesuvius continued to erupt. Ashes were already falling, not as yet very thickly. I looked around. A dense black cloud was coming up behind us, spreading over the earth like a flood. Let us leave the road while we can still see, I said, or we shall be knocked down and trampled underfoot in the dark by the crowd behind. We had scarcely sat down to rest when darkness fell. Not the dark of a moonless or cloudy night, but as if the lamp had been put out in a closed room. You could hear the shrieks of women, the wailing of infants and the shouting of men. Some were calling their parents, others their children or their wives, trying to recognise them by their voices. People bewailed their own fate or that of their relatives and there were some who prayed for death in the terror of dying. Many besought the aid of the gods, but still more imagined there were no gods left and that the universe was plunged into eternal darkness forevermore. A gleam of light returned, but we took this to be a warning of the approaching flames rather than daylight. However, the flames remained some distance off then darkness came on once more and ashes began to fall again, this time in heavy showers. We rose from time to time and shook them off, otherwise we could have been buried and crushed beneath their weight. I could boast that not a groan or cry of fear escaped me in these perils, but I admit that I derived some poor consolation in my mortal lot from the belief that the whole world was dying with me and I with it.